So today I wanted to take a look at how I'm sequencing chords inside of VCV Rack. This is something that can be done in a million different ways, as is every single thing with modular, which is kind of why I love modular. It's really great to go around and see how other people are approaching essentially the same problems and finding really interesting solutions to how they would want to program a chord progression. So keep in mind, this is just the way I approach it and the way I like to do it. It's certainly not the right way or the best way. Um, yeah, that's why modular is so great. Now, when it comes to sequencing chords, I also find myself mainly using VCV rack for this exclusively, not as much my hardware setup. It's my, my hardware setup just isn't made to do chords and it really doesn't have a lot of sounds I like to use with chords. Um, so that being said today, I'm gonna use uh, the host, the VST host by VCV Rack. This is a paid module, just keep that in mind. I think it's like 30 bucks. It's one of the few modules I have actually paid for and something that I'm so glad I did. I use this all the time now. So if you're gonna end up making music that kind of sounds like I'm doing today, I would highly recommend it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up. I think I have a Soft Piano by Spitfire Audio. I really love the Spitfire Audio Lab sounds. There's so many, we'll just pull them up here. Um, here are the piano. The Frozen Strings, I really enjoy. A lot of the piano stuff, and really just a lot of these acoustic sounds. The drum kit is fantastic. Um, so yeah, these are all free. You can just go download these. I use them all the time in more traditional recordings as well, just you know, as a VST in uh, Pro Tools or whatever DAW I'm using at the time. But yeah, I've got to go ahead and load up the soft piano, throw a little bit of reverb. All right, the built-in reverb sounds pretty good. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna throw a clock in here first. I generally just go for clocked just the clock I prefer. I probably should play around with some other clocks at some point. And then what I'm gonna be using for the actual chord sequencing are models by Aaron Static. So I'm gonna pull in this diatonic CV chord generator. I really like this module. Actually, the whole series of modules is fantastic. We'll pull out some more and use those later and explore them a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged in to our labs. So that'll go into the CV. Now, something to keep in mind here with this host is that we need something to open the gate. And when you're using acoustic sounds, kind of like this piano, there's not really any need for an AD or an ADSR envelope generator you can just keep the gate open. So I'm gonna just use an attenuverter. And throw it onto the gate, use the offset to open it up a little bit, and we have sound. Now, when it comes to the actual sequencing of chords, I generally like to just use um, fairly basic sequencers. Uh, my main sequencer for my hardware is Moskva 2. Uh, really amazing sequencer and also very simple. And that's just kind of my jam. I like some of the more simple stuff. There's definitely far more capable sequencers. So I'm just gonna use this eight step sequencer here. All right, so what we wanna do is we want to run the clock. Forgive me for being a little OCD about my colors. Uh, this color cable color key module, I love it. Instead of clicking, having to right click and pick a ca cable color, you can just click on the color of the cable you want to have spit out every time. So it's really nice for keeping track of stuff. So I'll be doing the clock signal and the reset. The reset is pretty important here. I'll show you why in just a little bit. I'm gonna ahead and run those two signals over to the sequencer. And now we can start sequencing our progression. So I'm just gonna take the output 
and go into the chord input. Go ahead and bring the length down to two. Let's bring the clock speed down just a little bit. I'm gonna take it down to 30 and just multiply it by two. Cool. All right, so we're starting to get a progression. adjust the scale of the output depending on what sequence you're using. So we have a basic sequence. Um, one of the reasons I like doing it this way instead of really trying to program a certain sequence right out of the gate is that I like to just explore. This is kind of my way of sitting down and just finding new progressions. Sometimes I'm not even looking to make a song or a recording out of it. I'm just looking for interesting progressions that, you know, it kind of gets me out of my standard writing bubble when I sit at a piano and I kind of do the same things over and over again. Um, this can be a nice way to kind of spice it up and get some different ideas. I'm going to take this back down to just 30 BPM. Okay, so we have a general progression and it's not all that interesting. Um, but there's a lot more we can do. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this sequencer. When you do use the duplicate option, notice that all the knobs are also duplicated the position, so just something to be aware of. We're gonna go ahead and take the same clock source and clock the second sequencer. Same for the reset. So we hit the, you'll notice they're not quite lined up. That's why the reset is important line it up cool so now what we have going on um, is that we can take the output of the second sequencer and go into the chord type so now instead of just the C major we're getting a C major 9 a D minor 9 So already it's sounding a little more complex, a little more interesting. Cool, all right, so just for a minute now while we have a basic sequence going is let's go ahead and add a second kind of a lead voice i like to call this like an old man tinkering at a piano so basically what i do when i sit at a piano just some old dude putzing around on it and instead of sequencing this time um I'm going to use more of a generative method for approaching this one. So I'm going to use the random note CV again. This is another Aaron static module. Love it. Scale CV. So the scale CV actually just spits out uh, a full polyphonic scale output. So it works really well with these other modules. Um, you can use the same scale output to go to the scale input here even for what we're doing our chords with. 
And now you just have a little more control over everything, make sure everything is flowing together. I tend to be 50-50 on if I use that. Sometimes I like to just go way outside of the box and outside of any traditional scales just to see if anything good happens. Half the time I'll come up with something, half the time it just sounds like absolute dog shit. I can't wrangle any good sounds in and I'm back to essentially quantizing to a scale. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and make a generative clock though. I'm gonna use a sample and hold. Be nice if I could spell sample right. Cool. Sample on hold, and we're going to use an LFO. I like to use the wavetable LFO. Um, all the way to the right, it essentially turns into a pulse wave, uh, which is basically a clock signal. So we're going to take the output of the LFO, put it into the trigger of the sample on hold. The output of the sample on hold is going to go into the frequency modulation of the LFO. Uh, let's get a scope here. We can better see what's happening. Adjust the time so we can have a better view of things. So you can see the pulse. It's just a ticking pulse. It's a clock. But if we add in some probability changes and we allow for some frequency modulation to start happening, all of a sudden we're getting different size pulses. which can make really interesting interactions for generative music. And I, I generally, when it comes to modular, kind of just tend to enjoy a more generative approach. Um, so again, this is just a personal thing that I like to do. By no means is it the only way. We'll go ahead and add that into the trigger of the random note CV. So we'll start getting random notes and the output We'll go to the CV input of our second piano. And like before, without the gate, we're not gonna get shit sound wise. So, gotta run our gate signal. And I am not paying attention to my cable colors and it's, it's getting to me. Turn that offset and we have sound. So, you'll see what I mean by old man tinkering at a piano. It's just. But it's a sound I really enjoy. I like just the sitting back, relaxing, getting some ideas, just for fun. Let's go ahead and add Plateau. This is easily my favorite reverb in VCV Rack. Um, yeah, it's this is really hard to beat. So we already have the aux sends turned up to both pianos. Cool, yeah, so that's Plateau doing its work. Nice. So that's not all we can really do with this yet. I'm gonna have mute that lead voice here for just a little while. One more thing that we have to play around with with our chord progression is exploring the inversion and voicing of the diatonic CV chord generator. So these will just change the chord inversion or the chord voicings. And they're really interesting ways, I think, to get some different sounds and again, add a little bit more life to the progression. I'm just gonna go for, let's just go for a standard Bog Audio LFO. Pretty simple LFO, but yeah, I find I use these all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in slow mode. And for now, I'm gonna turn the offset all the way up so we have a unipolar signal. I'm just gonna take the sine wave. Let's throw it into the voicing. with this you can just like we did before use some kind of sequencer to change the voicing um, 
a lot of times, again, I'll use something like a generative clock or an LFO with uh, these modulations because, you know, when you're just changing the voicing of a chord, you're not really changing the progression all that much. So it's a really interesting way to keep that initial idea, that initial progression uh, that you liked and just give it a little bit more life and a little bit more variance over time. Same for the inversions. We'll go ahead and just take that same modulation. Just to give you a sound of what it's like. I tend to use the voicing one a little bit more. So yeah, this is something we could explore this for hours and hours, and I often do. Uh, with another sequencer on a different clock source going at different rates, so every time it swings back around to the chords, you're getting something different as far as the voicing goes, and just something I, I find it really pleasing personally. So let's go ahead and add that little lead voice back in, see what we're at. Get a little modulation on the reverb here. Bump up the wet signal. So yeah, that's essentially how I generally start the process of sequencing chords inside a VCV rack. Um, it's just an approach I really enjoy. These modules, the air and static ones, are really great if you're not into the sounds of acoustic instruments and you, you know you're not using these VSTs. There are really good polyphonic synth voices for free inside of VCV rack um, and yeah I'm sure you can get some really cool stuff with that I just yeah I, I'm not really into programming or sequencing chords this way with synth voices just because I kind of suck at it you know I don't really ever know what I'm going for so I'd love if, if somebody uses a methodology like this and they come up with you know some cool synth voicings I'd certainly love to hear it. I'm always looking for new ways to do things. That is the fun of modular, like I've said. Uh, the community is just great. People, how creative people can get with essentially some really simple stuff just constantly blows my mind. I, I feel like I'm learning something every day from somebody else, which you know, it's just what keeps me so interested in modular. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope maybe you learned a little something from this or got some inspiration go around give this a try i do have a couple of these i'll put a link in the description where you can go to my patch storage and download some patches like this if you want to jump start um, just so you don't have to make all the basics i'll try to find one with just free modules so it works for everybody right out of the gate and uh, yeah thanks for watching